Thank you for taking the time to watch this rebroadcast of an interview with Life's Journey founder, Chris Shea. For more information about Life's Journey, check out our website at www.lifesjourneyblog.com. We hope you enjoyed the interview. Welcome back. You're watching and listening to On Time. Drug addiction is more common than many chronic illnesses, including heart disease and stroke, and affects more than 9 million Americans. And one-third of them aren't getting the help they need. To address this problem, the Open Society Institute here in Baltimore has started a attacking, attacking a drug addiction initiative. Joining us is Christopher W. Shea. Christopher is the program officer for the New Drug Program. Welcome to On Time, Christopher. Thank How you. Are you. Thank you for having me, Kai. Is there a reason why we don't, as we talked with Steve Klein at the beginning of uh, the show, why we don't treat uh, drug addiction like a disease oftentimes, like we mentioned, like diabetes, like heart disease? Right. And, and that is unfortunate that we don't. Um, this has been classified as a disease, not unlike any other disease, as you mentioned, uh, since the 1950s. Um, but it really is more of a stigma for people. And, uh, like mental illnesses, in a sense. Like mental illness, although there have been some advances in mental illness that you know, people do recognize that they need help. You know, and, and one of the things we need to focus on um, is to have people understand this is a chronic disease and it needs to be treated on a, a medical and clinical nature. We want to share with folks that you're new to the Open Society yes, Institute. Congratulations. Thank you. You were with the Father Martin Ashley program, which is located in Haver de Grace. Correct. Uh, very well-respected program. Yes. Uh, been around for a quarter of a century. Uh, is, can you kind of describe the difference between your involvement with the Open Society Institute and, and, the, and that program, perhaps how they, how they differ in strategy? Well, very different, and, and you really can't compare the two. Uh, Father Martin's actually is a treatment center. Okay. Uh, it's an inpatient center, and they have people there for a month where um, they actually do inpatient work combining medical and clinical. Mm -hmm. um, the Open Society Institute, we're a funding uh, uh, philanthropy. Sure. Uh, so what we do is we partner with other agencies in the city who are trying to treat this as a disease right. and uh, help them with strategies and funding and uh, the ability to come together and, and make this happen. Right. We know the Soros Foundation, which is responsible for the Open Society Institute, yes. really reaches out in a broad area of, of trying to uh, reach society on a number of platforms. Yes. Let's talk about the drug addiction initiative. What is that and how does it work? The Tackling the Drug Addiction Initiative, uh, which I'm now new to uh, with the Open Society, uh, we're going to focus on how do we close the addiction gap? How do we ensure that access to the treatment that's needed is there? Uh, how do we integrate the new health care reforms uh, that is now into law is being implemented in Maryland? How do we ensure that everyone who needs treatment receives the treatment and that they receive the best treatment possible? Right. Uh, Christopher, is, it, is yours going to be really about focusing on funding, funding organizations that already have programs in effect, or does, uh, does the Open Society Institute also have its own programs that are going to be initiated as well? Right, and we fund uh, people who are working on the programs, uh, although we help to influence some of the ways programs are being operated, yes. bringing in you know, new treatment modalities, um, evidence-based treatments, and really help some of our funders who are you know, struggling with financial issues on how do we make this happen. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're lucky that we can come in and uh, help them with that. Sure. Financial, uh, obviously, issues are one uh, barrier to stop people from getting uh, treatment for Correct. addiction. Uh, what are some of the other barriers that, that you have found that stop people from getting treatment? Well, the financial uh, is the barrier. Uh, some of the stigma is still barrier, mm -hmm. uh, you know, going into treatment and then, you know, having my neighbor know or my friend know that I'm in treatment. Uh, so that stops some people. And, and for others, too, it is uh, the economy and the, and the fact that they may not have health coverage for that treatment, right. uh, you know, or, or they fall in the, in the sense that they're working, but they still can't make enough money to afford you know, the health care or the health care is not covering it. So that's really what our initiative wants to work on is to make sure that everyone is covered uh, under health care and can receive the services that they need. Those who, who may not have the economic means uh, to get ready treatment or readily available treatment, I should say it in that manner, 
Do they have a harder time than those who do have means uh, from, a, from a clinical standpoint in your experience? Um, more difficult time in obtaining the treatment. Yes. Uh, once they receive the treatment, it, it's all the same. Sure. Uh, you know, addiction uh, really is a great equalizer. Right. And no uh, socioeconomic boundaries. Not at all. Right. You know, so once somebody gets in treatment, it's all about them taking the personal responsibility and doing what they need to do you know, to uh, receive that recovery. Now, I bring that up because I think of someone, for instance, who might be an alcoholic and may have access to a place like the Betty Ford Clinic. Right. Uh, someone, an alcoholic, again, who doesn't have the economic means to go to a place like that, may find a treatment center, but are they going to get the same level and quality of care? Well, and that's what we're working on with the Open Society Institute and with our partners and, and grantees of bringing in evidence-based treatments mm -hmm. and ensuring that wherever you go for treatment, whatever the modality, that you will be receiving the best possible care. What are some of the treatment programs, if you can share those with us, by the way? Um, we work more so with overall agencies that will provide a lot of outpatient care and, and um, walk-in clinic work. Okay. Uh, we don't necessarily fund the treatment facility itself. Uh, but we do look to fund the agencies that will work with those centers. Okay. Uh, government agencies, in other words? Um, public, private, K kind of quasi, agencies, right. quasi, all of the above. That type of thing. Um, are you encouraged right now, Christopher, but in terms of where we are with a treatment and, and our understanding of addiction right now? Or are we still... We still have a long way to go in terms of the, the learning yes. curve. I'm encouraged. I, I've been in this field for over 16 years. I've seen a lot of change. Uh, I'm encouraged. Um, you know, there's more on the healthcare front that there is more of a recognition of this as a disease and covering this as a disease. I'm encouraged at the studies that are being done and showing all the neuroscience of this disease. So hopefully it'll help people to understand this is not a moral failing. Right. This is a disease and needs to be treated as such. And is there, can you give us an idea of the uh, the kind of investment that uh, the Open Society Institute will be putting into this uh, problem? Um, the Open Society Foundations and, and backing by George Soros, uh, we are putting in what is needed to accomplish this goal. Uh, we're also doing fundraising ourselves, and we have a, a lot of people who are investing in, in what we're doing and uh, you know, feel positive in that. So a lot of people in, in the Baltimore community are going to help us right. to make this goal possible. You don't have a, a, a dollar amount off the top of your head that you can Not off the top of my head. Okay. I'm, I'm still new. <laughs> I thought I'd ask. Okay, well, you, we'll yes. have that next time from you. Very good. Christopher Shea, thank you so much for coming Thank on. you. It was my pleasure. Welcome to the organization as well. Thank we you. Appreciate it.